in many cases you need to have some EDR technology that looks at the machine, particularly the Windows machines and sees in the kernel what's actually going on in there and detect bad things actually happening. Well, I'm sure you have some of those. So if we select here on the App Exchange, the application in Curator, for example, right there, CrowdStrike. If you have Falcon endpoint, you know, uh, technology, you may actually want to download this package. And sometimes the packages do not contain the rules. So you may have to, and we're going to be probably doing a short video that shows how we can create simple rules for this but the, the package will give you what is essential which are custom properties and that that the parser needs to extract so you can actually take those and fire offenses with right but if it's not that but let's say that you have fire eye so here you do the same. Here you have custom properties to extract the right values. So this one doesn't have rules. And let's take a look at this package. It has one custom rule and you can actually click on the documentation and see what the rule and that can be probably you may want to have more than one rule but that will give you an example of what that rule looks like. Looking at the documentation of the package, you know, you see that it actually this package works by putting IOC. So you can get packages that do put data into reference sets as coffins and record the future and all the stuff that we that we have seen. And, and this uh, uh, FireEye is doing the same. The other, so you need to look at the documentation and see what the package contains. And sometimes it can also contain uh, one or more rules, right? So here we see. Actually, there seems to be more than one rule in there. So again, but look at the documentation. I don't want this to be something on FireEye, but you, you need to see what's in every one of those packages that are in the App Exchange. If what you use is Carbon Black, I believe that there is also, well, actually it's a couple of packages for Carbon Black as well. Again, you get the point. Whatever EDR technology you use, you need to see how much you can get into feeding thread intelligence data, getting rules, getting custom properties, so you can actually improve your rules, uh, etc. Right? But this conversation will be very incomplete if I were not be talking about a source of EDR technology that is, in my view, extraordinary and is actually free, which is Sysmon. Sysmon is a uh, free technology from Microsoft, you probably have heard about that. And this actually, in Curator, there is a group of rules. If I were to look here for the group, should be a Sysmon group, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And I apply that filter. You can see that I have, uh, how many? Probably 200 rules on Sysmon alone detecting very sophisticated things that happen on the kernel of those uh, porous Windows machine and when you put Sysmon and there are separate series of videos that show you how you actually do that in my channel so you can actually bring that EDR technology. In fact if you have an environment that is of high security or high risk and you are using Windows which I wouldn't, but uh, nevertheless, if that's what you what you need to have, because uh, and, and it's insecure, I, I will use a belt and suspended technique, and I will use one heck of a good EDR like the ones we had uh, described before, and Sysmon as well. I will use them both, and I will be a little paranoid about uh, those machines if they are high value target. Another important type of endpoint information that you need to get. It has to do with file update. Well, you see, when ransomware strikes, what they do is that they encrypt each and every file, or at least most important files, in the machine. And what they will be doing is they will be updating the existing file with the encryption version of it. So if you have a log source that notifies you about file updates, 
then you can detect a simple rule that says well, if I get these very many, let's say 500 or more file updates in a minute or less, <laughs> you, your machine is being screwed up. One of the type of things that gives you that, that type of uh, logs, well, there are two technologies that comes to my mind. Stealth bit is one, and here it is, and there are packages in QReader for it. So if you use it, you, you, you know what type of the messages uh, you actually get, but you these technologies, because they are sitting on the machine and looking what they are doing, they can uh, give you information on that. Uh, Sysmo can also give you a little bit of information on it. Uh, another one that I can think of is Snare. They, I haven't used it myself, but it may have the capability of maybe there's a Snare component of the family of product that look at these things. They are similar application. I can think of Tripwire. You know, so look at every one of those technologies for what are things that can detect that. The, 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 the only thing that I have is like a second thought on this is that, okay, yeah, I can detect that ransomware is actually uh, happening, is taking place, but you're screwed. I mean, there's very little that you can do, except for the fact that th there is something you can do. I'm here, I'm looking at a rule editor, and as you know, part of the things that you can do when a rules fire is actually execute a custom action. And these are typically Python programs and there are separate videos that talks about how you actually do these custom actions. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we can actually do, and we actually experimented with this, and there's a separate video that talks about this with Big Fix, is actually when, when we detect that the machine is getting a lot of file updates in a particular period of time we quarantine the machine and we actually attempt to kill the process that is actually performing the encryption uh, so you can try to save some data on it again how fast this will work or not uh, the, the way the pace that encryption goes is actually very fast so that's what I you know, I'm recommending this with a grain of salt it's something that is possible but I want this series of videos to be as thorough as possible in terms of what can Curita do in terms of phishing and ransomware Another very, very important source for detecting ransomware. So let's say that you have your, your rules ready, you have your trading tails ready, and you is loaded with file hashes and IPs and URL. But let's say that you don't get the right log source for X and Y reason. But if you have Q&I, and you have Q&I monitoring a particular segment of the network, Q&I is going to be, by virtue of the flow, is going to be, of course, grabbing, you know, not just the, the, the source and destination IP, and so you get the IP reputation, but it will be extracting from the actual fields things like URL and file hashes without the, depending on a log source to do that. In fact, this is an example where we can actually see that here my uh, Q&I is computing file hashes as they go through the network. So if something goes across the network, whether it's a, there's one flow, several flows, it treats every flow, every session as a single flow, it's going to compose the, the thing together. Oh, there is a file here. There's, oh, I'm going to get a file hash. Boom, and I'm going to send it here. So your rules can actually fire on file hashes, URLs, and IPs even when you don't have the right EDR technology that catches that for X and Y reason. Great piece. Don't overlook on this one because this can really uh, save you. And, and this is infallible. I mean, if the, if the network, the traffic goes through, this thing is going to pick it up and you are going to get that information right there. Big, big piece on this uh, recommendation of phishing and ransomware. And to conclude this video, which is getting a little too long for my taste, uh, there is a new app. I actually installed this one yesterday. It's called the Network Threat Analysis Tool. And this is similar to what UBA does for, for user behavior analytics. And, and, and I, I will talk about UBA later in another video, because UBA also contributes a lot to ransomware and, and, and things of that matter. Maybe I will make this video longer and add it here. But the, the thing is that this is actually doing the same machine learning and getting to know 
how your network, what type of traffic happens on your network, and then it will bring up to your attention outliers, things that we don't normally get this type of traffic from this uh, IP to that IP, internal to external. So here you, you, you can see that I don't have obviously any R2R, I don't care about that, but uh, stuff that from remote to local 76. And, and but the, in this system, uh, it's learning what is normal. So these outliers, they are not really outliers. The, the, the model is being built. But this is a fantastic way of detecting things that are strange. And once you know the IP of something that is strange, now you can do searches in Curator and you can actually, you know, complete the, the puzzle in here. But this is a, who is going to analyze uh, the nature of your traffic? You need to have AI, you need to have machine learning to actually do that. And Curator with the free NTA app can give you that. You can also detect the presence of indication of ransomware and phishing by virtue of the user, the way that the user is actually behaving. It's not from the net. The, all the things that we have discussed before can, can, can also be complemented by saying, well, this is this particular user. So for example, we, if we look at these are the UBA rules, if we look from the threat intelligence aspect, you can see that, you know, and you can actually go into every one of these rules and see which are the reference set that it works with. But these are going to be contributed on its own way of saying, well, this is the actual user who is doing these, these uh, strange things. If we look for exfiltration of data, uh, you know, similar things. If we look here for phishing, you know, we may even find uh, some rules that matches. Let me take this filter out and look for phishing. And, you know, there are a couple of phishing. If we look for ransomware, we're going to find some some rules as well. So I don't. I just want to make sure that you don't, that I don't make this conversation incomplete by uh, omitting, omitting uh, what uh, UBA can contribute to the picture, right?